Hey there, it's Damien here again with 9to5Google and we're taking a quick closer look at the super lightweight Google Go browser, which is now finally spread globally and can be downloaded by anyone. So let's go. Thanks for watching 9to5Google on YouTube. Be sure to thumbs up, hit subscribe and then enable notifications with the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. So if you didn't already know, Google Go is essentially a super streamlined version of Chrome that weighs in at just seven megabytes, making it perfect for emerging markets or those of you with really modest smartphones. The main interface is fresh, clean and streamlined to ensure that no matter your smartphone, you do get the fastest, smoothest experience possible. Google Go also manages to bundle in Google Lens, which means that you have a one-stop shop for most of your browsing needs. For starters, I have to applaud the bottom search bar as it makes it so much easier on larger phones where you don't have to stretch to access the Google search bar itself. It also includes recent searches just above so that you can quickly resume your searches, although you can't disable this feature, at least as far as I can tell. The rest of the main Google Go de facto homepage is designed to get you to your favorite sites and common corners of the internet pretty much instantly. It does rely heavily on web apps, of which more can be added like bookmarks if you want to just head directly to your favorite sites. The pre-configured nav options at the top though are static and can't be changed. I will say it is pretty familiar though, as you can use voice search, view your discover tab, images and GIFs also get their own sections too. Having direct access to your offline downloads section too is also a nice touch, as it does make finding your files that little bit easier. The addition of a read aloud mode is also great for reading out web pages such as Wikipedia, and it even knows to skip in-page ads. Obviously the usefulness of this feature will vary depending on how you use the internet though. Considering that nearly all Google developed apps now include a dark mode of sorts, it's disappointing that Google Go didn't have one at this stage. You can, however, alter the background theme of the main home pane, should you wish. This gives you a rudimentary dark mode of sorts, and it means it isn't as missed as it would be on other applications. It's also worth noting that the app section of Google Go will also load your native installed apps for sites like Twitter and Facebook, should you have them installed. Otherwise, Google Go will head straight for the web app, which of course are slowly catching up in terms of features. I think one of the best outright features in Google Go is the ability to force light web pages by standard. Of course, this might prove especially useful if you have spotty or slow data connections. Because of that, there is even a notify feature that will ping you once your page has loaded in the background. If you live in a rural or remote region, I think this might be pretty useful. The inclusion of the second language search feature also hints at where this browser is particularly aimed at. You can set a secondary language that can be used within Google Lens for translation or even just standard web searches. The lack of tabbed web browsing might be a massive no-no for some of you out there and rightfully so, but for those not well versed in tech, the elderly or young children, Google Go is a pretty solid mobile browser that is fast, lightweight and most importantly gives you just enough to make it worth a closer look. That said, for most people out there though, I would just suggest sticking with the full fat Chrome experience on your mobile. Although of course I would love to hear your thoughts. If you're already in a region where Google Go is available, tell us what you think in the comment section below. But until next time, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.